The greatest fighting the greatest forces fighting in the world, in the world. They do not retreat, they, they do not surrender. Not surrender. In Christianity, there is no retreat, no surrender. I know this might sound harsh, but it must be said. Cultural Christians are cowards. Being a coward doesn't mean being afraid. We are all afraid at times. But the difference between Christians and cultural Christians is that Christians have something greater than fear. They have love. America is culturally Christian, much like England was in the days of William Wilberforce and Granville Sharp. And the American church is in decline because it is not Christian. It cowers to evolution, to other gospels, and it does not confront heresy. Cultural Christians do not follow scripture, like Ephesians 5.11. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. Instead, they tolerate the fruitless deeds of darkness and do not expose them. They are politically correct. Cultural Christians retreat in fear and do not take the message of the cross to the enemy. They are slaves. Slaves to they fear, but Christians are no longer slaves. No slaves. They are courageous. Second Timothy 1.7. 1, 7. But the spirit but God the spirit gave us does God not make us timid, make us timid. but gives us power, gives us love, power, and self-discipline. Christians are fighters. They do not wait for the fight to come to them. They do not cower, and they do not retreat. Ephesians 6.12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Realms. Christians are driven Christians people, are driven Matthew 11, 12. 11, 12. Since the time of John the Baptist John came, the Baptist until, now, came until, now, until now, the kingdom of heaven the has been going heaven forward in strength, 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 and people have been trying to take it by force. I have started a local started ministry of apologetics which begins by Christians understanding what they believe, how to defend it, and how to share it. So far, so very few far, Christians have been interested in uh, dropping down to dropping zero. Down to Does zero. this mean that there aren't any Christians any here? Christians no, here? no, it just means no, that cultural Christianity has robbed the passion and purpose of many Christians. Many Christians. And I'm not promoting the heresy of the war. And when I say this, whose ministry spearheads cultural Christianity, founding the Saddleback Church as a church for non-believers. Christians know that God Almighty emptied himself of his glory, coming to us as human to suffer and die for them. The message of the cross moves them more, than, more than, fear than fear or other interests, not that they have no other interests. They're all unique by God's unique design, thankfully. But what God did what can God move did them to incredible places, places, even to laying their lives down for the one who never had to know suffering or death, but suffered and died for them, making a sacrifice no one else could ever make for them. Revelation 13.8, the Lamb who was slain from the creation of the world. 1 Peter 1.20, he was chosen before the creation of the world. World, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Revelation 12.11 They triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Turn with me to Romans, me to Romans, me to Romans the first chapter, verse 18. Chapter, verse 18. Follow, verse along, verse follow along, if you would, in your Bible, in your first Bible, chapter in the 18th chapter, verse of the book of Romans. Book of Romans. The, title of the title of this message is Christianity, a Scientific Model. Romans 1, 18 through 21. 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21. The wrath of God is the being revealed from revealed heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Since what may be known about God is plain to them because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that men are without excuse. For although they knew God, they neither glorified Him as God nor gave thanks to Him. But their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Now I'm going to define what a scientific model is, and to do this I must also define what pseudoscience is as well. A scientific model is based on empirical evidence, which is designed to be challenged to see how well it performs when applied. Pseudoscience fails to meet the requirements of the scientific method, which are to make observations, propose a hypothesis, design and perform an experiment, and to test the hypothesis.
hypothesis. Therefore, pseudoscience fails to be a scientific model to be challenged to see how well it performs when applied. Similarly, the gospel of Jesus Christ is historical and can be challenged to see how well it performs as well. It can be tested, has been tested, and will continue to be tested in the disciplines of history, archaeology, geography, and anthropology. A belief system parallels pseudoscience and that it cannot withstand being challenged to see how well it performs when applied. Like pseudoscience, it fails to meet the requirements for this existing against the empirical evidence. There is pseudoscience masquerading as science, just as there are belief systems masquerading as the gospel of Jesus Christ. Worldviews that are contrary to science and contrary to the gospel of Jesus Christ are contrary to evidence. They are lies. I know that sounds like a bold statement to make. The reason I make it is because though the Bible is not a book of science, we do not look to it for our science. It is scientifically accurate. Modern science isn't very old. It is only a little older than 400 years beginning with Galileo, known as the father of modern science. There are challenges and arguments against the existence of God from a scientific perspective. Two such examples are the God of the Gaps theory, a term used to describe observations of theological perspectives, in which gaps in scientific knowledge are taken to be evidence or proof of God's existence from Christian theologians, not to discredit theism, but rather to point out the fallacy of relying on teleological arguments or arguments from design for God's existence, which is contrary to the scientific evidence and the use of it by atheists. The term goes back to Henry Drummond, a 19th century evangelist lecturer who promoted the God of evolution in the conflict piece, which holds that religion and science will always be in conflict. John William Draper and Andrew Dix in the late 1800s popularized it through, though much of the so scholarship that the conflict the thesis was based on has since, since, late, since, since been found since to be inaccurate, such as the claim that it was widely believed by people of the Middle Ages that the earth was flat. Today, historians, Today, historians know that there was scarcely a Christian scholar of the Middle Ages who didn't acknowledge that the earth was a sphere and knew its approximate circumference. Also, discoveries in modern science were driven by religious ideas that Kepler's laws and Newton's Principia Mathematica. The term goes back to Henry Drummond and 19th century evangelist lecturer who promoted the God of evolution and conflict pieces. There is a theory of evolution as well, for which it is stated by some scientists and theists. The science has proven evolution, therefore evolution is true, and the Christians don't believe it. The Christians don't believe science, and they are not rational people. Let's test this beginning with the definition of terms. The definition of evolution in the sense of things changing is evident. No rational person disputes that. Therefore, rational Christians believe it. We can observe change. Evolution in the sense of life coming, of coming from non-life, non-life, non-life and that life randomly life generating new generating genetic information, new information is something entirely, something entirely different and is different something that doesn't hold up as scientific. 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 It in fact fails, in to, fact hold fails to hold up under the scientific method existing as pseudoscience as well as a belief system against the empirical evidence. What evidence? What evidence? Darwinian evolution has failed in the fossil record since we now have the record showing the Cambrian explosion, which is more phyla appearing in a geological moment and presently exists opposite of opposite Darwin's prediction that there would be fewer fossils in the past and more in the present. Neo-Darwinism, the new form of Darwinian evolution, attempts to sustain the theory in the information of the cell through mutations in genetic information over time. This is neo or new since in Darwin's day, Darwin knew what was in the cell. This new Darwinian theory has failed biologically because there is no way to increase the genetic information of an organism. To further examine life, its origins, and its possibility, we now examine the Cambrian layer and its evidences and conclusions in paleontology, the science dealing with the life of past geological periods. In this science, one of the leading lights is Dr. Stephen C. Meyer, a Cambridge-trained philosopher of science, examining and explaining the amazing depth of digital technology found in each and every living cell, such as nested coding, digital processing, 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 distributive retrieval distributive storage, storage system, 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 operating system, operating system, operating system. Meyer is developing Meyer a more fundamental argument for intelligent design, design that is based not on a single feature like the bacterial flagellum, but rather
together on a pervasive feature of all living systems. Alongside matter and energy, Dr. Meyer shows that there is a third fundamental entity in the universe needed for life, information. In Genesis 1.25, God made the wild animals according to their kinds. Phyla are basic features that bring together large groups of organisms, body plans that we divide animals into major groups with, vertebrates, arthropods, echinoderms, for instance. Charles Darwin's famous phrase, nature takes no sudden leaps. Darwin stated that if there is evidence of sudden appearance in the fossil record, that it would be evidence of special creation. In Darwinian theory, there would be a gradual increase in phyla through time. What we find in the fossil record is a sudden appearance of all but a few phyla in a very small part of the Cambrian period. Darwin's tree of life doesn't exist. What we find instead of a common ancestor are phylums, that they were separate from the beginning, staying separate, having diversity within themselves, but never connecting with each other. The volume and complexity of the information that controls the development of a body plan, a phyla, is staggering, and its location in the cell is perhaps the ultimate challenge to the neo-Darwinian scenario of random mutation and natural selection. We know that much of this higher level information isn't found in DNA. You can mutate DNA indefinitely and you cannot get a new organism. And no amount of time can overcome this limitation. Dr. Stephen C. Meyer, using a standard method of reasoning, used by both Charles Darwin and the famed 19th century geologist Charles Lyell, the best explanation for an event in the remote past was a cause known from our experience to produce it, a presently acting cause. One now in operation. The present is the key to the past, standard historical, scientific methodology. If we are trying to reconstruct what happened in the past, we should let our present experience of cause and effect guide our search for the best explanation. Looking for cause known to cause the effects which we are trying to explain. What is the cause now in operation that produces new information, whether digital code or blueprint? Where does the kind of information come from? We know from our experience, from our uniform and repeated experience, the basis for all scientific reasoning about the past, that information always comes from an intelligent source. When we find information in the Cambrian animals, the most logical conclusion is that the information is from an intelligent source. That information required to build them must have come from intelligence. Hebrews 1.3 The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. Here we will look at the anthropic principle, cosmological constants allowing for life in the universe. It has been the popular belief for decades that science and theism are light years apart. However, as our knowledge of cosmology, astronomy, physics, biochemistry, and DNA has continued to grow, the supposed gap has all but disappeared. In astrophysics and cosmology, the anthropic principle from Greek anthropos meaning human is a philosophical consideration that observations of the physical universe, universe must be compatible with a conscious and sapient life that observes it. Some proponents of the anthropic principle reason that it explains why the universe has the age and the fundamental physical constants necessary to accommodate conscious life. The phrase anthropic principle was first proposed in 1973 by Australian physicist Brandon Carter. He proposed this on the 500th anniversary of the birth of Nicholas Copernicus as a contrast to the Copernican principle that is viewed as having demoted humanity from any sort of privileged position within the universe. One expert has said that there are more than 30 separate physical or cosmological parameters that require precise calibration in order to produce a life-sustaining universe. Robin Collins, who is doctorates in both physics and philosophy, has written several books on this subject. Some of the constants that Robin discusses are the remarkable degree of fine-tuning, such as the mass difference between neutrons and protons, electromagnetic forces, strong nuclear forces, and the cosmological constant. 
Imagine that you want to move the dial of gravity from where it's currently set. Even if you were to move it only by one inch, the impact on life in the universe would be catastrophic. That small adjustment of the digital information would increase gravity by a billion billion Animals anywhere the size of humans would be crushed. Would be crushed. Would be crushed. The dials of the cosmological constant are so finely set at values beyond human comprehension and on a razor's edge. But if these values are altered by the smallest degree, life cannot exist in the universe. Robin Collins. Robin Collins. Robin Collins. Astrophysicist Hugh Ross has calculated the probability that these and other constants, 122 in all, could exist today for any planet in the universe by chance, i.e. without divine design. Assuming that there are 10 to the 22nd power, powers are in number multiplied by itself. That many times planets in the universe, a very large number, one with 22 zeros following it. His answer is Shocking. His answer is shocking. His answer is one shocking. chance in one 10 chance to the 138th hour. hour. That's one chance, That's one chance, one chance in one with 138 zeros after it. There are only about 10 to the 70th power, power, atoms, power in the atoms in the entire galaxy. In effect, there is in zero effect, chance zero that any chance planet in the universe, in the universe would have the atoms, would have the atoms, would have the atoms, would have the life support, having the life support, the life support, unless there is an intelligent designer behind it all. As Stephen Hawking, theoretical and mathematical physicist, was noted, the laws of science as we know them. Know at present contain present many fundamental numbers, fundamental numbers like the size of the electric size charge of the electron and the ratio of the, the masses of the, the proton, proton and the electron. The electron. The electron. The remarkable fact the remarkable is that the values of these values numbers seem to have been seem very finely adjusted very fine, very to make possible the development of life. Freeman Dice, Freeman Dice Freeman mathematical Dice, physicist Dice, who co-founded quantum, quantum electrodynamic theory, 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 has stated the more I examine the universe and the details of its architecture, the more evidence I find that the universe in some sense must have known that we were coming. Hebrews 11.3 By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen what is not made out of what we out of visible we find a paradox a meaningless universe can never be known to be meaningless therefore the universe has meaning to quote c.s lewis in his book mere christianity this raises a very big question if a good god made the world why has it gone wrong and for many years, I simply years refused I simply to listen to the Christian answers to this, answers, question, answers, this question, this question, because I kept on feeling whatever you say and however clever your arguments are, isn't it much simpler and easier to say that the world is not made by any intelligent power? Aren't all your arguments simply a complicated attempt to avoid the obvious? But then that threw me back into another difficulty. My argument against My argument God against the universe seems so cruel and unjust. And unjust. But how, I, how had I gotten how this idea got of just and unjust? And unjust. A man does not call a line crooked unless he has some idea of a straight line. What was I comparing was this I universe comparing with when I called it unjust? If the whole show was bad and senseless from A to Z, so to speak, why did I, who was supposed to be part of the show, find myself in such violent reaction against it? A man feels wet when he falls in the water because man is not a water animal. A fish would not feel well. Of course, I could have given up my idea of justice by saying it was nothing but a private idea of my own. But if I did that, then my argument against God collapsed too. For the argument depended on saying that the world was really unjust. Not simply that it did not happen to please my private pants. Thus, in the very act of trying to prove that God did not exist, in other words, that the whole of reality was senseless, I found I was forced I to assume that one part of reality, reality namely my idea of justice, of justice was full of sense, full of sense, full of sense, full of sense. Consequently, atheism, Consequently, atheism turns out to be too simple. Too, simple. too simple. If the whole universe, if the whole has, no universe meaning, has no meaning, we should never have found out that it has no meaning. Just as if there were no light in the universe, and therefore no creatures with eyes, we should never know it was dark. Dark would be without meaning. Without meaning. Without meaning. Without meaning. Is relativism, is relativism relative, 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 relative? The heart of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the message of the cross, shows us four emerging ideas. Justice, something we are all looking for, which includes defining real evil. We come to know what it is to be lonely. 
We need love. We need love. We need also, love. we hurt those also we love. Hurt those we need love. forgiveness. We need forgiveness. Need relationships. We need. We need. We can try to deny try these. To deny these. Absolute. Absolute. Yet we know that they are absolutely absolute. undeniably in each of us. Justice. Justice. Evil. Evil. Love and forgiveness. Forgiveness. There is one place in the world where these four converged. Converged. On the cross of Christ. Cross of Christ. To recap, we can see that there is a difference between the gospel of Jesus Christ and belief systems, and that the gospel of Jesus Christ can both withstand scientific scrutiny and evidence itself in this way, as well as through the absolutes that are the primary needs of humanity. We can also see the difference of scientific model and the difference between a scientific model and pseudoscience. One is based on empirical evidence and the other is based on blind faith against the evidence. And that in these is formed our worldview from which comes the purpose and meaning of our existence or lack thereof. We find that the account of the Bible for creation has far more scientific evidence than does an unguided process of chance which turns out to be mathematically and scientifically absurd. Both in the infinite impossibility of chance and on the other side which concludes in infinite regression such as a multiverse theory. At risk of oversimplifying the matter, if you were walking along the beach and saw Tarzan loves Jane written in the sand, you would not deduce that the waves crashing against the shore were responsible for this for that information. Why? Why? Because we know even intuitively that nature only produces patterns, and that information requires intelligence. This fact resulting in a very large number of scientists converting to intelligent design because of the scientific evidence, often without any religious influences in any period of their lives. Their lives. To quote from Professor quote from John Lennox, Professor a triple Lennox, doctorate a triple mathematician doctor, and scientist as well as an apologist of Christianity, Christianity in his debate with Richard Dawkins at, at Oxford, information is not material. Mathematics founded in history can now be found to relate to the universe. This is not required for success and reproduction. Mathematics is not causal, it is descriptive. So the question arises, why is the universe mathematically descriptive? The anthropic principle the anthropic reveals cosmological, cosmological pra parameters, parameters ca calibrated, calibrated with precision, precision transcending, human, transcending comprehension. human comprehension, and both the astronomical both the and the infinitesimal, infinitesimal required in order to produce a life-sustaining life universe. universe. We find a paradoxical universe as defined by atheists since it does have me, and that there is evil. In the very act of trying to prove that God doesn't exist, that the whole of reality is senseless, we find we are forced to assume the one part of reality, part namely of reality, our idea, our idea of, justice of justice, is full of sense. Full of sense. Full of sense. And we find that and relativism, find that relativism is, relative. is relative, that absolutes, that do, absolutes govern us, do govern us, but we are all looking are for, all looking for, for justice, which justice, includes which defining real evil, that, that we feel alone and we need love, we need love. We need that we need forgiveness. To keep the love we need, and that these four converge on the cross of Christ. But God is not distant from the problem of human suffering, that he has entered into it, into the problem deeper than anyone else. We can see now that faith is not blind, but it is based on evidence and therefore cannot be opposed to science or scientific inquiry, including inquiry of itself. Faith is not a barrier preventing science. It is in fact revealed historically in modern science to be a catalyst of it. We find that the sanctuary and the science lab are both places to find God and places to know Him more. After all, how can science, the disciplined observations of nature, be anything other than a revealing of the Creator, of the laws of nature? The division of faith and science is detrimental to both spiritual and intellectual growth, which God purposed to grow in you. Science alone cannot reveal who God is, just a strictly scientific examination of me by you cannot reveal to you who I am. That requires of someone to reveal themselves, which God has done through his creation. Your conscience, your conscience, though marred by sin, his word, his word, the Holy Spirit, and the personal work of Jesus Christ. In closing, I want to expose that the image of the church in America to both atheists and theists is that it is where one is to check their brain at the door. Though the church is not a building, rather it is composed of people 
who are in a relationship with God through belief in Jesus Christ, and from that the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The American church has gotten stuck at salvation and stifles the Holy Spirit in sanctification, which is a progressive process. It is not something that occurs instantaneously at our conversions. It is a progressive work done by the Holy Spirit. Romans 12.2 And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. 2 Thessalonians 2.13 But we should always give thanks to God for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God has chosen you from the beginning for salvation, through sanctification by the by the Spirit and faith in the truth. 1 Peter 1, verse 1 and 2. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who reside as aliens, scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, who are chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, by the sanctifying work of the Spirit, to obey Jesus Christ and be sprinkled with His blood. May grace and peace be yours in the fullest measure. I wrote a letter to the editor of the local courier last year, which was not posted in it, and I will close with quotes from it, and from people's quotes in the letter. I do not feel obliged to believe that the same God who has endowed us with sense, reason, and intellect has intended us to forgo their use. Galileo Galilee. When I wrote my treaties about our system, I had an eye upon such principles as might work with, considering men for the belief of a deity, and nothing can rejoice me more than to find it useful for that purpose. Philosophia, Philosophia, Naturalist, Principia Mathematica, Mathematica, Sir Isaac Newton, Sir Isaac Newton, Sir Isaac Newton. Science without religion is lame. Religion without science is blind. Albert Einstein. This is part of what I wrote into the letter. I am obliged to relinquish my intellect at the door of the institutions of my faith. I am obliged to relinquish my faith at the door to the institutions of academia. For intellect in places of faith is viewed as heart while faith in places of academia is viewed as unreasonable. My heart can never be absent in my faith, neither can my reason ever be absent in my intellect. Therefore my intellect cannot be an enemy of my faith, neither can my faith be an enemy of my intellect. And the attempt by both institutions to separate them is wrong. Their creeds do not even call for it. If you've heard the Holy Spirit speaking to you, offer to you as the privilege to allow the Holy Spirit to continue to speak to you about the revealed qualities of God and His creation. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to read Romans 1.20 or 20 days. Do you want God to further reveal Himself to you through the revelation of His creation? Are you someone whose worldview is one founded on meaningless, unguided existence? For you who have a relationship with Jesus Christ and have a desire for this assignment while doing it, listen for him to reveal himself to you. By doing this assignment, you are inviting the Holy Spirit to engage you, and by looking and listening to him, you are giving God a medium to reveal himself to you through.